Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. and I'm live every Wednesday for about 30 minutes at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, both on Facebook and YouTube. So hello everyone rolling in. Say hello and where you're watching from. <laughs> Hi, hippie Kansas girl. Where are you from? <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, Janine, Kathy, Myrtle. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Bonnie. Debbie, Linda, Mrs. Liz. Hello. Hi, Ananda. Debbie, Linda. Welcome, everybody. More Lindas. Hello, hello. Hi, Terry. Hi, Ree. Hello, Tilly. I loved your baby shower box from last week's project. Hi, Pam. If you're wondering where I've been on my blog, I have been, me and Mr. Paper Pixie, my husband Brian, have been working feverishly on product shares. We are just about finished. My goal is to try to get them out in the mail by Friday, so a little bit early than I anticipated. But wow. <laughs> You guys are awesome. I had the most participants this, this go around. Beautiful, beautiful paper. I love the product shares because I can really get up close and personal with all the patterns because I get to see them all. And the ribbons are beautiful. Anyways, I'm excited to get those in the mail to you. So thanks to those of you that signed up. Um, oh, I'm frozen. Look at that. All right, hold on. I'm going to... Okay, I'm back. It, I don't know why it's freezing, but hopefully it is not just you. <laughs> I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with Facebook. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I'll just keep going out and coming back in if I need to. The, str the stream should keep going. Um, <laughs> you we're only hearing my voice. Hopefully the video is back. Just give me some thumbs up or something so I know that you can see me. Okay, good, there I am. Thanks, Marlene. Um, okay, <laughs> Narlene said you're frozen, let it go. That's right. Um, it froze just before the broadcast too, so we'll see what happens. I can always go out and come back in. So anyways, hootie hoo from Indiana, hi Kathy. Oh goodness. Um, okay, so tonight I have a remix of a project I shared over three years ago. It was a mini handbag using the envelope punch board. I have um, pixified it so that you don't need the envelope punch board. We're gonna do it with the Simply Scored and I'll show you some tips and tricks. But here is a sneak peek of the project. It is a mini handbag. I did not put handles on this one because I think it's so cute the way it is, this little pouch. It's got a Velcro opening. This is actually a perfect size for a Ferrero Rocher, a Lindor truffle, a, a small handful of Hershey's Kisses. Um, but we're going to use actually quite a few products tonight. I have had fun playing with some new stuff. Um, the other great part about this project is it uses a six by six piece of designer series paper. So those of you use that uh, join my product shares, this is the perfect project for all those papers you're going to be getting. So stay tuned for that. Let me do a couple of housekeeping items. Let's see, um, my host code for the month for January, and as someone mentioned last week, this looks like an eye exam, BPDNWZPH. Please use that on your orders with me that are under $150. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code so you can spend the stamp rewards that you will earn. And then my free gift for orders of $75 or more are the dimensional, oh gosh, what are they called? They're the full sheets. They're not dimensionals, the foam adhesive sheets. I always forget what that's called. Um, so that's the scoop there with free gifts. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of our new catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at the paperpixie.com slash happy mail. And I'd love to get those in the mail to you. We're in the midst of the new mini catalog and celebration. 
celebration is now through February 28th and you can earn free goodies um, at $50 order increments or $100 order increments. You have a bunch of options. I think it's seven different, seven different choices for every $50 or two choices for every $100 that you spend. So that's always fun during celebration. And the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine is now available for purchase. I know a lot of my customers have it in their hands and they're loving it. I love mine. I grab it more often than I grab the standard uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine just because it's so easy and sits right on my desk. So um, I have a quick show and tell from Lily um, from Girl Scouts and then we'll jump right into the project because I want to get back to wrapping up the product shares. Hopefully I can wrap them up today or tomorrow. <laughs> um, that's okay, Tilly. If you forget the host code, I can always contact Stampin' Up! to have it added. So don't worry, I do keep my eye on that. Um, one of the tricky parts with the host code is you have to actually click the apply button and I think some people forget to do that. It's an extra mouse click. But yeah, if you forget, don't worry, I can add it for you. So let me go ahead and flip the camera. Let's hope that I don't freeze. I'm gonna keep my hand on the camera. Will you let me know if I freeze? <laughs> um, so quick show and tell from Lily. She is in brownies and they earned their pottery badge this week and all the brownies in her troop got a pottery wheel. Now this is quite fragile. I felt like that moment in um, the movie Ghost where the pot just goes crazy <laughs> and gets all smushed. We did the best we could with a battery operated um, pottery wheel. So anyway, she painted that and had fun. She got to share it and tell, um, share information about it. So there is that. Here is what the um, mini handbag looks like. Now again, I didn't add handles to this one. Um, Brian has the link. He's going to post it right now. It should go to both the Facebook chat and the YouTube chat. Um, and that's the link to my 2017 post. I'll also link to it in my blog post on Friday. The details of this project will post to my blog Friday on Friday's blog post. That'll probably be the only post that I do this week because um, I was trying to get those shares out. So um, again, I didn't add handles to this, but I kind of love how cute this little, whoop, this little package is. It's got a Velcro closure. And it's a pretty good size on the inside, the base is one and a half inches square. I can hear my laptop fan running, so maybe that's part of why we were freezing. Um, and it's about two and a quarter inches tall. Um, and again, it tapers. So, um, I don't know, I just love the way this looks. Now this is using the True Love Designer Series paper. It's a diagonal pattern, but we're gonna score on the diagonal for this, so it turned the pattern into horizontal and vertical. But I kinda love how that looks, and inadvertently, well, I didn't, I put red lipstick on because of the project, but I forgot that my shirt is also the same stripe. So I'm coordinated with my project tonight. Oh goodness. All right. So again, we're going to start at, um, or with six by six inch piece of designer series paper. Again, this is the love you true love designer series paper. And as I mentioned, it's got the diagonal stripes. The other side is so cute as well. I love this paper because it's black and white, so you can change up the colors with our blending brushes, um, our uh, Stampin' Blends, um, the sponges, all that good stuff. So, um, again, this is in lieu of the envelope punch board. I will give you the measurements for the envelope punch board in case you want to do that. If you still have yours, I still have mine. I just choose not to use it because you guys can't buy it from Stampin' Up! So here is what I've done, and some of you have asked me about this before. On the Simply Scored, and hang on till the end for Prize Patrol. I always forget to tell you that, but I'll announce winners, and then I'll, now, I'll show you what uh, this week's Prize Patrol is. So that'll be at the end. So I take a Sharpie marker, and I put that right down the middle of my Simply Scored at the 6-inch mark. Okay? And I just literally take a Sharpie and just drag it down. Sometimes you have to do it over a couple of times. Um, but I'm using that as sort of my guide for diagonal score line. Score line. What I'm do here is I'm going to line up point to point on the diagonal on that six inch score line and then kind of hold my paper in place. This is one thing the envelope punch board did really well. And I'm frozen again? Yeah, you are. Okay, hold on.
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. All right, so um, this is one thing the envelope punch board does really, really well is the diagonal score lines. But in lieu of that, line up corner to corner on that six inch mark. And I'm just keeping my eye. If I freeze, I'll go out and come back in. I'm going to score at three inches. So I just kind of start in that channel, three inches, five and a quarter, frozen again. <clears throat> Goodness, hold on guys. <laughs> this is going to be a fun live broadcast tonight. All right, so we did three inches, five and a quarter, six and three quarters, and nine. Okay, so let me repeat those again. Three, five and a quarter, six and three quarters, and nine. Does the internet look okay? Yeah, the internet's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to rotate it to the opposite corners again. We're going to do the same measurements. Thank you guys for being patient. There may be something going on with Facebook tonight. All right, so three inches again, and I'm holding my paper in place, five and a quarter, six and three quarters, and nine. Okay, I do have a template to show you. I did just update Chrome, so that could be part of it as well. This is what we're going to end up having this paper look like. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines we just made. The paper bows for putting on packages. Are you talking about the envelope punch board bows, Sandra? That might be what you're talking about. Let me know. All right, so we've folded and burnished on all the score lines. And we're going to remove, now again, this is what the envelope punch board does really well for us. We're going to remove these little sections where our score lines have crisscrossed. Now, it may be difficult for you to see. I can hear the fan running again. I think it's got to be chrome, maybe. Um, we're just going to go with it. I'm going to cut out those triangles. So again, it's where the score lines crisscross and you just want to come in and kind of notch those out. Okay. A little bit difficult to see on the striped paper. Easier to see when you're up close and personal to it. So probably easier than it looks like on the camera. Or it is easier than probably what it looks like on the camera is what I meant to say. Still working. <laughs> oh, goodness. The one thing I love about the, the, the streaming software that I use is I can go out and come right back in. And again, I froze. So And I'm back. Wow, this is going to be a fun replay. It's a good thing I'm doing a pre-recorded YouTube video for this. <laughs> We're just going with it. I'm, remain I'm remaining calm. Sandra said now they're made with strips. Made of strips. Made with strips. Hmm. You may have to email me, Sandra, and remind me. Okay, and I'm just working my way around. There should be eight little divots that you cut out. Okay, eight little triangles. All right. Oh, Amy, you just did your first live. Shoot me an email and I'll give you some advice. How's that sound? The best advice I can give you is to be yourself and just roll with it. <laughs> Do I have a video of a mini purse for the sanitizer, Sandy? Um... I don't think that I do, or I'm not one specifically made to fit those, but I keep calm and pixie on. I like that, Norlene. Oh, goodness. All right, so 
I am going to then do these diagonal score lines. I don't know why I put this away. I can't talk and do things at the same time. If, have you noticed? <laughs> Um, we're going to create these diagonal score lines. Now you could score these if you wanted to, and that would just be at the three, well, it's the three inch mark if you put it, I'll show you. But I kind of like manually folding these because it makes it really easy. So at three inches you could score down to um, that first, it's not even a horizontal score line. Let me show you on the template. You would score down and stop before that center square, which it's a square when you turn it that way, okay? But we're gonna manually fold these because it goes really fast. So I am going to fold on the, folding from the, I've got it in a diamond, right? So I'm folding on the first score line from the right. And then I am going to, I'll show you up close to the camera. Let me get this going first. But I am lining up this score line to this score line. See how that lines up there? And then that's actually gonna give us that diagonal score line in the center, okay? And then I just came in and burnished that. And we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side here. Again, I kinda bring in, well, I'm right-handed, so this is not gonna work. <laughs> I just put my fingernail right, right there and there. And I've done folds like this before, and I'm frozen again. Hello again. All right, so <laughs> we did the same thing, lining up score line to score line to give us that diagonal fold, okay? And we're gonna actually do that in all four triangles. Ooh. All right, so then All right, so you see how we've done that? We've done these diagonal score lines here. They don't look diagonal when you fold it this way, but those are all folding in, okay? Now I'm gonna determine that I, well, I want to have the vertical stripes on the front. So this is gonna be my front, and these are gonna be my sides. So for the sides, I'm gonna take some liquid glue. I like to use liquid glue for this. I think on my 2017 tutorial, and I do wanna say it was um, inspired by Elaine Jackson from Paper Craft Button. I don't think she has her blog or YouTube channel anymore, but I loved her projects. So I wanna give a shout out there. I'm gonna put glue on those little outside tabs just to fold them in. That gives us sort of a reinforced edge on the inside of this little handbag, okay? Technology is so fun, Janet. <laughs> when it works, right? I know you're being sarcastic. <laughs> so these are gonna be our sides and I'm just folding those in. It just gives us that really nice folded edge. And then what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna put liquid glue on all the places I need to right away. I keep making sure I'm moving my hands. <laughs> the camera that's not frozen. Um, all right, so. If we're looking at it from this perspective, I'm gonna put glue here and on the back side of that, okay? I like to do both of those at once. So glue on, again, this section here and on the back side. And then I know this paper is hard to see, but glue and on the back side. So then what I'm gonna do is just fold these in without getting glue on my hands. So there's one. And then there's two. I know you can't see that right now, but we folded that into our handbag. And then I'm just gonna come in and take my time and press that into place. That would be really cute, Jean. She says she hopes to make two, one with the flowers on the outside and one with the stripes. Great idea. Again, our double-sided paper, how do you choose which side? So you just make two, there you go. All right, so I've just burnished that really well. And the next thing I'm gonna do is this one, I'm gonna actually fold in. So I'm gonna put glue on that tab and that just kind of holds everything in place. And we'll fold that into the handbag. 
then we just don't have to cut things away. I'm looking at, I've got glue everywhere. <laughs> My ring matches the project tonight too. I'm just all coordinated. And again, use your bone folder to burnish things into place. Okay. All right. So now we've got the other side. We're going to do the same thing. This is not a lot. It's not a lot trickier, but you got to try to get glue on these inside sections. So pull it out if you need to. Again, I'm putting glue here and here and then on the back side of those. Okay. So glue. All right. We've stayed live for the longest stretch now. And then glue on the back side. I'm being real haphazard here, but the glue works better in my mind than tear and tape. So again, we're just going to fold those in. I think, can you see that? We're just folding them in. And by putting glue on both sides, glue goes exactly where we want it to go. And I'm just coming in and burnishing while that glue sets. Um, Hippie Kansas Girl, she has a question. Sorry, I caught it before you did, didn't I? <laughs> what software do I create my templates in? I use um, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. They're not fancy, but I do the measurements and everything so that they're to scale <laughs> because that's how I roll. All right, so we folded everything in. See, it's this funny looking rectangular box that's one and a half by two and a quarter. This is our sort of back flap, and I totally forgot I was going to glue the sentiment on the back, but we'll do it after we put it together. I am now going to pinch and meet the front with the back, okay? And I'm only pinching at the top there to kind of get that little pouch looking. I, you could score this, but I actually love that rounded edge here. I just love the way that looks, okay? So now I'm going to grab, and of course I threw the box away, but it is linked on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. And these are the 5 8 inch clear thin fasteners from Velcro. I love um, the size of them and how thin they are. They really are <clears throat> thin clear fasteners. And I kind of exam, I sandwich the hook and loop sides together. Um, when I get the package so I can just cut off one as I need it and I'm gonna stick the I'm looking at these because one is clear and one is white I'm gonna stick the white one which is the loop to this the back side of this little tab so we'll stick that there I just find that the thing that you're trying to stick to the velcro if you do that the loop side um, it catches the hook side better. So the hook side goes to the purse, the loop side goes to the lid or the flap. I pulled the backing off the clear one and then I'm just going, I've got, I'm using my belly as a third hand, you can't see that. I'm going to fold that down in place. Now I do open it here just to reinforce the Velcro just by pressing on it so that gets good and stuck. Now again you put your treats in Close your box and that's the basics of this cute little mini handbag. I love that it uses a six by six, kind of a weird way to put it together. Again, it's based off the envelope punch board. But the other thing I love about the style of this is you kind of have, well, I think you can see the stripes go perpendicular to each other, but you also have sort of this definition here. It just gives it that real classic handbag look, which I love. So the template will be on my blog as well. Now let's do a little bit of stamping. We're still good, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we're going to be using two different stamp sets tonight. The first one, and I've mentioned to some of you, I'm converting my stamp storage to these Avery L pockets. I still have lots to do, but shares. So <laughs> shares got in the way, which is, which is a good thing. Um, this is the Punch Party stamp set. It's a photopolymer set free with a $300 order during celebration. This is that special host set for big celebration orders. Um, and so we're going to use this awesome rectangular border because I just love the looks of it. Let me show you what that looks like with that rectangular postage stamp punch or rectangular. Yeah. Rectangular postage, st postage stamp punch <laughs> and the heart that comes from this set. And then we're also going to use the Valentine keepsake stamp set. 
This coordinates really well with the mini tiny keepsakes box. Is that what that's called? Anyways, that's what this stamp set is meant to go with, but it pairs really well with this mini handbag. It fits perfectly in this little postage stamp stamp. So that's what we're going to do. A combination of these two and then the punches. We're going to use the kiss punch for this heart because I think that heart is adorable. And then the rectangular postage stamp punch. That is a mouthful. So let's start with Whisper White. I'm going to start with the postage stamp first because it's, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm going to start with the red rubber, the cling from the Valentine Keepsakes. We're going to stamp that first in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Always start with cling first so that you can get these lined up. You can also use the Stamparatus probably stamping it up way too high. Okay, something sweet for someone sweet. I love that. These would be really cute for Valentine's Day. And then I put the ink away. I still need that black ink. Then we're gonna do the postage stamp. I sure will, Debbie. Hang on tight for a second. Oops. And now I can I'm using, well, I'm looking, of course, this is at a weird angle, but now I can see where I'm stamping. There we go. Okay. You start with cling first because you can't really see the cling when you stamp and then you can take the photopolymer and then you can place that wherever you stamped the cling stamp. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just easier to see that way. I'm going to grab real red and again that heart from Punch Party. And I'm just going to do one heart on this one, I think. I did a pair on the other one. There we go. A little bit of a pop of red. And then we're going to bring in the... Let's, I probably have to cut off the end here because I forget that it punches. Vertical. And even those little postage stamp scallops fit perfectly in this punch. I love that as I try to get them lined up. Not frozen. <laughs> uh, all right, so how cute does that look with that border? Now this would still be adorable without the postage stamp, or sorry, the punch party stamp set, because I know it's, a, it's free with a $300 purchase. And that may be out of some of your budgets. Um, so you can do the, let's see, I am actually stamping on Whisper White, Kathy. I have the basic white, but I'm using up my Whisper White first. Um, so I will report back once I use it. Um, but you can also use the, I think I mentioned this, there is a heart in Valentine Keepsakes as well. So you could do that without the border. Um, all right, then the other thing is I'm just going to do a punch of a little heart from the kiss punch because I love me some punches. There we go. And now we can add the finishing touches to our mini handbag. I'm going to take, I think actually for this one, I'm going to do dimensionals. The other one I glued down. You have to tell me which one you like better. <laughs> probably won't even notice much of a difference mm. two probably works it fits really well on that center two and a quarter inch panel pop that I kind of like it with dimensionals that's cute and then this little guy will do with liquid glue and Debbie, I haven't forgotten your request about how I'm storing my stamps. It's in progress, but I'll show you an example. And then liquid glue, I'll stick this cute little heart down. So Dabber Do, I, I know that it will fit a Ferrero Rocher and Lindor Truffle because it's a one and a half inch square base. Um, I don't believe, I did see Tilly, you mentioned the Ghirardelli squares, maybe the minis, but prob not the regular size ones, because I think those are 
at least one and three quarters, so I don't think that they will fit because this tapers down to one and a half inch. Um, I'm going to grab a matte black dot. You could throw in some um, Hershey's Kisses, Hershey's Nuggets, a little handful of treats would fit in there. And forgot my take your pick tool. I'm just going to pick up a little matte black dot. A rhinestone would look really pretty on this as well. Just put that off to the side. And then we have our mini handbag featuring the Valentine keepsake stamp set paired with Punch Party. We use the Kiss Punch, the Rectangular Postage Stamp Punch, and the True Love Designer Series paper. So, so cute. I'm going to be making a lot of these, I can already tell, because I love the way that they look. Um, Debbie, really quick, let me answer your question and show you, and then we'll jump into Prize Patrol while we still have the internets working. Um, so here is an example of a photopolymer set. I just take the, oh, how would you add handles? Kathy, on my um, blog post that I'll link back to the blog post from 2017, I think for the handles I did, um, I think it was five and a half inches by a half of an inch. And I glued those um, just to the front here on either side of that center section and they fit really well. You kind of break them down a little bit with your bone folder. You could just glue the cardstock or you could punch holes and put ribbon. There's a number of different cute things you could do to add handles. So this is a photopolymer set. I actually just, and I'll probably go into more depth um, when I show it, when I share this, but I just fold the label, the spine, which is kind of already folded. I pop that in the front. I've got a piece of Whisper White that's cut to fit these Avery L pockets. And then I just slip the stamp set. You can see I have a lot out that need to be cleaned. I just slip the um, photopolymer sheet right in the back and then just tuck that in sort of between the paper and the and But as you can see, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. The clear Velcro. So Colorado Creating, go to thepaperpixie.com slash favorites and you'll see a link. Um, I bought them on Amazon. They're the 5 8 of an inch thin clear fasteners by Velcro. I think you get 75. Um, good question, Kathleen. I usually design my 3D projects around what I the treats that I find versus the other way. This one was just a, um, a remake that I wanted to do since we don't have the envelope punch board anymore. It's one of my favorite projects, the little mini handbag. The cases, Kristen, I actually store away in storage that is not easily accessible um, for when I sell my retired stamp set. So I've got space for it, but um, I got space for the cases. I just put them in a place that's kind of out of the way. Then I wanted to show it. Well, this is an example of a background stamp. These are the six, well, six by seven stamp cards from Stamp and Storage. I stick the cling to these. I actually trim these down to five inches. I'm trying to find. Okay. Here's an example of a full stamp set that I just stuck to those clear stamp cards. And these obviously take up a little bit more space, but still less than a folder. Um, the bags, Jennifer, I got from Amazon. They're also linked on my favorites page. They are Avery L. Um, so this is a good question. I am gonna store them in a way that I can flip through them, but this is where my Airtable database comes in really handy. And I, I do promise to show you what my Airtable base looks like, um, but I just do a quick search, so. Uh, the Avery envelopes, yes, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. They will be there. Did I miss one? Are we good? <laughs> one of these days I'll get Mr. Paper Pixie to come on and say hi. Um, all right, so prize patrol. There is. If there are coordinating dies, I don't put those in the back of the pocket, Linda, because I use dies often without the stamp set. Um, I do have those in my Airtable database, but I don't... Um, store them in the back of the pocket, but you can. Good question, Linda. I don't think it does. Hold on. I think the bath and body, yeah, it's too tall. See how it's too tall? But hmm, that may be a project idea. Um, I store them in alphabetical by catalog. 
I'm still gonna do the same thing, Stacy, because I, since I keep the um, the stamp, this part in the front, that's kind of what I look like. I don't necessarily, but that's kind of what I look at. I don't necessarily look at. Um, Stampin' Up's gonna stop printing on the acetate sheets on the back, but I think, it's a good question, Stacy. We will see when that changes. All right, Prize Patrol. I'm gonna put this, um, you guys already know what to do. <laughs> All right, so let's announce winners from last week. I'm going to, we're gonna do a new Prize Patrol claim form. So the winners from last week are M. Schrader and Angie Latham. Congratulations to both of you. If you will claim your Prize Patrol here, thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. This is for only pre-chosen winners. So for M and Angie, if you will go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol and put in your information and I'll get these in the mail to you. Now for tonight's prize patrol, I am giving away a roll of the pool party um, sheer ribbon and a pack of the Whale of a Time 6x6 designer series paper to two lucky winners. Really quick um, rules, not rules, but if you're watching on YouTube, you need to make sure that you leave this hashtag in the comments, not in the live chat. This is for my YouTube watchers. Again, hashtag prize patrol, no spaces. YouTube, leave it in the comments. Facebook, you know what to do. Just leave it in your comments. Hashtag prize patrol, no spaces. And I will choose winners by next, oh, I'll choose winners next Wednesday and announce them on next Wednesday's uh, live broadcast. Okay, so that is hashtag prize patrol, US residents only. I just ship within the US and I love this paper and this ribbon. I've got them stuck with a couple of um, removable glue dots, but that's that. Is it just rolling on in with hashtag prize patrol? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness all right let's see if you guys have any other questions let me know again here are those cute little mini handbags um this project's going to post on friday's blog post at thepaperpixie.com if you don't want to miss a thing you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe and you'll receive an email each time i publish a new post okay Let's see. Oh, you guys are sweet. Thank you for joining me. I'll be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for about 30 minutes or so. Hopefully Facebook will work with us next time. Oh, thank you. Um, any artwork? So Myrtle, I just showed um, Lily's bowl. I don't know if you missed that at the beginning. This is Lily's artwork for this week. She made a bowl using a battery operated pottery wheel, which was an experience. It was really loud. <laughs> um, so anyways, I'm trying to think if you have any questions, reach out to me again. Remember it's celebration. So freebies through February. If you don't already have a demonstrator, you can request copies of our current catalogs. This also includes the annual catalog. If you don't already have one at the paperpixie.com slash happy mail. And my free gift again are the foam adhesive sheets for orders of $75 or more through me. And then finally, here is my host code. You can always find this on my blog at thepaperpixie.com in the right-hand sidebar. And if you forget to add it, don't worry. Again, only add it if your order is going to be under $150, okay? Thank you, everybody. Let's see. Let me flip back to me. Thanks. You, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Reach out with any questions and have a great weekend. Take good care. Bye.